What's going on guys, it's Robert Hall and today I wanna to answer the question, will this strobe overpower the sun? Now before we jump into this, I wanna say I hate the terminology overpower the sun because to me or maybe to amateur photographers, it sounds like you're saying you want the sun to not be a highlight in your image. You wanna make the sun dark and that is not only extremely difficult, it's just not that great for the rest of your image. Here you can see an example of where I attempted to overpower the sun and we are at F22 with a 10 stop ND filter on my camera. So I don't even wanna know what the equivalent aperture on that is, but you can see the result. The sky is completely pitch black surrounding the sun and we've still got a sun that is clipped. So we didn't even accomplish the goal of overpowering the sun. So the short of it is you can't really overpower the sun. So that's why I hate the phrase. But the term is so popular and what people are really trying to say is that they're trying to balance their exposure as well as a light with really bright conditions, which takes a lot of flash power. Now all the time when people are asking, will the V860 version two overpower the sun or the 8200 or the 8400 Pro or the 8600 Pro, they're asking this question and people are giving them wildly different answers. Now the reason we get such vastly different results is because people have different methods and techniques for accomplishing photographing in bright sunlight. One is the working distance, the distance that people typically use their light at. If one photographer uses a light two feet away and another photographer uses it eight feet away, there is a massive difference there in the light intensity that makes it onto the subject. And then there's modifiers. Modifiers like a reflector or a Fresnel head are way more efficient at putting light on a subject than say an umbrella or a reverse umbrella or a massive softbox. And lastly is some people are using high speed sync and others are using standard sync. And that's a big difference because standard sync is about two and a half stops more efficient than high speed sync. Now a lot of people mix that up and don't understand that high speed sync is actually a less efficient way to light a subject. But if you need more information on that, you can check out this video in the top right corner. So I wanna answer the question once and for all today, what strobe do you need to overpower the sun? And I'm going to consider all factors, modifier, high speed sync versus standard sync, and the type of light that you're using. So today we are taking four lights in four different modifiers in both standard sync and high speed sync, and we're gonna find out what is the max distance that we can use them at in order to balance with bright outdoor sunny conditions. So for the lights that we're using today, I've got a good mix that I think represents what most people would be using outdoors on location, starting all the way down with a V860 version two speed light from Godox. That's gonna be your standard speed light, the same power as a Canon 600 EXRT or a Nikon SB910. After that, we're gonna bump up to the Godox 8200, AKA the Evolve 200. Then we'll jump up to the Godox 8400 Pro, AKA the Flashpoint Explore 400 Pro. And finally, we'll finish off with the big one, the Godox 8600 Pro, AKA the Flashpoint Explore 600 Pro. For modifiers, we're using the Fresnel head on the 8200 and the V860 version two, and then the reflector on the bare bulb units like the 8400 Pro and the 8600 Pro. Then we'll keep the Fresnel head on the 8200 and we'll put an umbrella in front of all four. We're gonna use a translucent, 32 inch white umbrella. After that, we're gonna switch the 8200 to the bare bulb. Then we're gonna to switch to soft boxes. We're gonna start with a 25 inch beauty dish easy lock soft box. This is your standard collapsible soft box. We're gonna do that with just the outer diffusion. And finally, we're gonna use the 43 inch Grand Para Pro. A lot of you guys have been asking me about this series of soft boxes and I finally got my hands on one. So we're gonna use that, which is a completely empty soft box. We're gonna use that with just the outer diffusion. And a little spoiler, that 43 inch soft box is actually gonna give you much different results than you think. So we got out here and we set up our cameras for the Sunny 16 rule. If you don't know, the Sunny 16 rule is an aperture of F16 with a shutter speed and ISO that correlate. So 1 100th of a second and ISO 100 or 1 200th of a second and ISO 200. That in bright sunlight should give you a pretty safe exposure. We use that equivalent exposure for both high speed sync and standard sync and we tested to find out the distance that each modifier could get us to balance with those conditions. It's a good time to tell you that my channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up interested in any of the products that are used in this video, you can find links to those in the description below. For the first light, I'm gonna show you how we got our results, but afterwards, I'll just give you the numbers on the remaining three. We dialed in our camera settings to be equivalent to the Sunny 16 rule. Here's a shot of just the ambient light. 
We started with the 600 Pro in standard reflector and moved it back and forth until we got the exact meter reading for a proper exposure on my Sekonic L858 DU light meter. Then we took a shot just to provide a sample. We then noted the distance from the flash to Alex. All measurements were taken where the actual flash bulb was rather than the front of the modifier since that would vary so much based on the modifier. For the reflector, it was 9.5 feet away to get a proper exposure. We then added the 32 inch umbrella. So we lost about 1 and 4 tenths of a stop of power, which means at minimum, that's why the 8600 Pro is designed that way with the umbrella mechanism. That way, instead of the light being pulled to tip over, the umbrella will just fall off, which umbrellas are a lot more disposable. We then added the 32 inch umbrella and had to move the light in to 7.5 feet. We then switched to the 25 inch Easy Lock Beauty Dish softbox and found it was more efficient than an umbrella as we used it at 8 feet and 4 inches. You know what? Why aren't you holding and hitting test and telling me the number while I move it? See, we're getting a process here. Again, this softbox only has outer diffusion and no beauty dish plate. If you were to add either of those, expect to bring it in closer. Finally, we brought out the 43 inch Grand Parabox Pro. I expected to have to move it in quite a bit because it's so much larger of a modifier, but instead it gave me the biggest surprise of the day. What? The 43 inch softbox was able to balance at 10 feet away, which was further than even the reflector, making it our most efficient modifier. I imagine this is because of the reflectiveness of the interior as well as the flash tube being completely unobstructed. Once we had our four results, we then switched to high speed sync. The reflector balanced at 6 feet and 2 inches, the shoot through umbrella 5 feet, the 25 inch softbox 6 feet, and the 43 inch softbox 7 feet. We then switched to the 8400 Pro in standard sync. The reflector gave us 8 feet and 4 inches, the umbrella 6 feet and 10 inches, 25 inch softbox 7 feet and 6 inches, and the 43 inch Grand Para Pro 9 feet even. In high speed sync, the reflector was 5 feet and 10 inches, the umbrella was 4 feet and 6 inches, the 25 inch softbox was 4 feet 9 inches, and the big 43 inch softbox was 6 foot 4 inches. Up next we switch to the 8200. Now a little note here, we use the Fresnel head for both the bare reading and the umbrella reading, but then we switch to the bare bulb for the softboxes since I think if people are using a softbox they're more likely to use the bare bulb. In standard sync, the bare Fresnel head was able to balance at 12 feet and 7 inches. The umbrella with the Fresnel head balanced at 7 feet, the 25 inch softbox with the bare bulb now on the inside was able to balance at 5 feet and the 43 inch Grand Para Pro was able to balance at 6 feet with the 8200 and its bear bulb. Then we switched to high speed sync, the Fresnel head was still able to balance 7 feet away, the umbrella was able to balance at 3 feet and 8 inches, the 25 inch softbox was able to balance at 2 feet and 6 inches, and the 43 inch Grand Para Pro was able to balance at 33 inches away, although it's so big that it was practically touching Alex at this point. So in order to get our high speed sync value, this is how close a uh, 43 inch has to be. Finally, we busted out the V860 version 2, not expecting to be able to do much here, but still wanted to give you guys an example. In standard sync, the V862 actually kind of impressed me. When we had it bare, with just the zoom head set to 24mm, it balanced at 8 feet. Then with the umbrella in front of that Fresnel head, it was able to balance at 5 feet and 3 inches. 25 inch softbox was able to balance at 5 feet and 5 inches, and the 43 inch softbox was able to balance at 6 feet and 2 inches. Finally, we get to the most hopeless example of the V860 version 2 in high speed sync. With the head zoomed in to 24mm, we were still able to balance at 3 feet and 3 inches. With the umbrella, we had to bring it all the way into 2 feet and 5 inches. The 25 inch softbox was practically the same at 2 feet and 6 inches. And the 43 inch softbox was 2 feet and 11 inches away, which was basically touching the front of Alex's face. So, in, in this case, we're using like the most portable setup, we're using a 32 inch umbrella and a V860 version 2, so any standard speed light would pretty much be the same here. But this is actually a little bit more functional than the softbox because uh, it, you get a little bit more distance and it's just not quite as in his face. So if you're trying to do a headshot setup outdoors, you can get away with these speed lights at full power in high speed sync, which is actually pretty surprising. 
I also put all this information into one little infographic, which I will link to in the description below in case you want to check it out more. So the primary takeaways from this video are, wow, that 43 inch softbox is a really efficient modifier. So really excited to use more and look forward to a future review on that. This also goes to show how efficient a Fresnel head can be because the farthest we were able to get anything away was 12 feet and seven inches with the 8200s Fresnel head. Don't like the light quality, but it's an option. All in all, this just goes to show that the modifiers play a huge role in the results that you're able to get. More than anything, I hope this video is a great resource for you to help you determine what light you're gonna need in order to use lights in the position that you want. If it was, leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more, and until next time, keep on shooting.